Last time, on Forest on Fallacy Friday. Kids are supposed to make choices like that. The Bible says train up a child in the way that he should go. To use a firearm. Teaching them how to use a gun and proper gun safety. And why don't you go ahead and hit that target right there and fire. Here, a gun. I'm going to teach my daughter too. That's for you, guy who has no cojones. Okay, so now we're going to go into this second video. It's uh, kind of short. He only commits a few fallacies because he really drags out uh, uh, one or two of these fallacies at length. And I'm going to play the entire portions of them. So uh, this first fallacy, though, is a false cause fallacy. And I think that you're going to see why. A conscious pioneer, a logic general, a reason brigadier. More bullshit from the pulpit. Meet me in the comment section and you get school, bitch. The godless engineer. Hey guys, what's up? Josh Fairstein here. Look, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to tell that America is standing in a very dangerous place. Everybody feels, especially after the Dow falls over a thousand points on the stock market the last couple of days, everybody feels like imminent doom is upon us, like there's some sort of danger and destruction that is ahead. You know, I've heard this phrase a long time, God bless America. And everybody's praying it right now because they're scared. But let me show you why God cannot bless America. You see, it was that in 1962, we begin to throw God out of public schools and public policy. And do, do you notice that ever since we did that, that there has been a constant downhill slide about American society, American finances, American everything. Why? Because the wages of sin is death or destruction. When sin enters, now it begins to devolve society. Okay, if you can't tell how this is a false cause fallacy he's saying that because we started removing god from the public sphere uh our society has gone downhill and that's uh, in direct relation to our removing god now, this is just ridiculous um it, it's ridiculous because we didn't have god in our public institutions until the 1950s i mean sure we had people that prayed probably i mean but but there was no institutionalized religion or anything like that uh within uh, our government bodies but yet in the 1950s during the red scare and all this they institutionalized religion and we've been pulling really hard to get out of that and so they forced got in there kind of like you're fucking somebody in the ass we're trying desperately to pull out without ripping anything and bleeding everywhere but you know he's really being disingenuous at this point because he's not considering the the hundred plus years before the 1950s in this country when we weren't going down the toilet as he word put it I mean yeah sure we're probably not as good uh, uh, as we have been in the past but I would like to think that we are getting better in some sense um, I would like to remain positive for the future I would like to make choices to better our future but what Josh is doing here is he's just painting this picture of such disparity when it's not really that bad and it's not that bad because of because we're taking God out of schools or out of government. It's it's really just ridiculous because there's no there's no evidence, no evidence whatsoever to suggest that because we started removing God out that that, that is the reason why stuff started going to shit. There's just no reason to think that whatso fucking ever. You see, God cannot bless a mess. That, that's why he can't bless America. Because America is in chaos. It's in disorder. We have disaligned ourselves with God. And he cannot bless something that is not aligned with him. Something that is not in order. Think about this. If you were to go up to a soda machine that says out of order, would you put a dollar bill in it? No. Because it's out of order. It doesn't work properly. Therefore, you know it's a bad investment. Okay, this is just an argument by analogy. Uh, you, you know, you're 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 comparing a couple things here that just doesn't even make fucking sense. Uh, this is the same thing as the watchmaker argument and everything. If you want to check out my argument by design video last week, go and check that shit out right now. It's pretty awesome in my opinion. But go check it out. Uh, 
but that's basically what this is. And with an argument by design or argument by uh, uh, analogy fallacy, uh, he what he's doing is he's dismissing very key elements of the analogy in order to make the analogy work. And in in that way, he's being disingenuous and he's misrepresenting uh, both sides of the analogy. And, and it, it, he does it in a way that's supposed to convince you or supposed to appeal to you. And my guess is that a lot of people are fooled by this. <laughs> Not this motherfucker. You know, look at America today. We have taken marriage that God created and it is devolved. It is degenerated. It is, it's disgusting is really what it is. Okay, this would lead to an argument by assertion. An argument by assertion is really, really fucking simple. Basically, it's where he's a broken record and he just constantly repeats the same thing over and over and he thinks that that makes it true. And in this case, it would be that the current state of marriage is disgusting. I mean, he's going to repeat this over and over and over with no basis to back it up. He's got nothing to back up with the idea that the current state of marriage in America is just disgusting. I mean, especially when you have traditional marriage uh, proponents like Josh Duggar out there that is totally fucking traditional marriage right up the ass and then pissing on its face while shitting in its crack. It's really hard for you to put out this idea that marriage right now, because of marriage equality is a disgusting thing. I mean, the the history of marriage is so vast and different. Uh, I mean, it, it's really it, it's really amazing that you people are still trying to push this idea. I mean, just fucking think about it for a minute, Josh. I mean, goddamn. <laughs> I mean, when marriage first started out, marriage was purely like Genesis. I mean, it was uh, this father figure chose a bride for the son and then they got married and then they joined forces and it was to build stronger armies and stronger relationships with other tribes so that they could survive it was a survival thing and that's all it fucking was and then you move on through time and, and you know love doesn't even really come into the picture of marriage until like the 1950s i mean until then love being in a marriage was really kind of an exotic thing so you're saying that marriage right now is disgusting, when in reality, marriage has constantly been changing, and for you to say that it's disgusting now because it's changed from what you perceived it to have always been, is just patternly fallacious as fuck. Is that now that we have made marriage something that God never intended for it to be. And when we're out of order, God says, I can't bless you. And now, in fact, going all the way back to the story of Noah. Remember Noah? The Bible says he lived in an evil, wicked, and perverse generation. Where they called evil good and good evil. Notice that we live in a generation that celebrates Michael Sam but curses Tim Tebow. I really want you to think about that. Because we live in that kind of America. Okay, here's the first straw man fallacy of this particular video um, he's saying that Tim Tebow is cursed while we celebrate uh, one of the first pro gay football players uh, Tim Tebow isn't exactly cursed by like the entire nation as he's putting it out there to be it's not like Tim Tebow is regularly uh, you know tossed out there as some kind of uh, you know sacrifice to society you know because he's some uber Christian football player there are a lot of people that support Tim Tebow and his right to take a, 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 a knee on the football playing field and, and pray to God for the win, but then, not, but then not blame God whenever he loses a fucking match because it's all on him, right? Um, but there's a lot of people that support him. There's a lot of people that uh, support the, the pro-gay football player that he's mentioning here, uh, the Sam guy. Uh, but there's also a, a, a lot of people that are against him as well. So what I'm seeing here are these two different football players with people both for them and both against them. I see no difference. But yet this guy is putting Tim Tebow out there like there is a difference. There isn't. 
And that's why God cannot bless us. But notice that in the days of Noah, what he had to do, he had to press the reset button and bring destruction because he had to destroy all of that which was not aligned with him. I'm telling you, America, it's time for the church. The Bible says, if my people which are called by my name will humble themselves, if they'll pray and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and heal their land. I'm telling you, America, it's time the church begin to pray. We are the only thing that can save America because the shepherd is listening to the voice of the lambs. But right now, I'm afraid that all he hears is the silence of the lambs. America, it is time to pray and return to God. Okay, finally, here's another straw man fallacy that he's putting out there. He's saying that Christians are being silent and Christians aren't talking enough and Christians aren't aren't being as outraged enough. I'm sorry, but if you go to the news, any kind of media source, you're going to find Christians being outraged. Uh, I mean, they're not being silent at all. So he's putting a straw man forward saying that Christians aren't being loud enough when they're being the loudest fucking group out there. Any time, any sort of small thing <laughs> just, just harms their sensibilities just a little bit. They start bitching about it on social media, on the news, everywhere. Look at Fox News every goddamn day. It's nothing but Christians on there bitching, except for that one chick. <sighs> I'm the Godless Engineer. Thank you for joining me today on this Fallacy Friday. Uh, if you will go down below, leave me a comment. If I left out a fallacy and you noticed it, leave me a comment down below. Uh, I would love to hear your thoughts on what Josh has said here in this particular video. Go down below, leave me those thoughts. If this is your first time here, subscribe, motherfucker. Click share on the side of the bottom of this video. Like, comment below. Why? Because John Cena!